Amen. So today we're starting a new series. We're starting a series called In the Wild. Now in this series we're going to talk about some wild, some animals from, from Scripture. Um, we're, going to talk, we're only going to talk about three. It's a shorter series. But we're only going to talk about three. I know there's a lot of animals in, the, in, in Scripture. In fact, as we walk through this series, we're going to talk about, we're going to mention some of the other ones, but there's three specific ones the Holy Spirit's just been poking and prodding me on and saying, uh, you need to talk about this. You need to share this. I want, I want them to know they need it. They need to receive it. Okay, and so the, the first one is this week we're going to talk about the wolf. Um, next week we're going to talk about the lion. The week after that, we're going to talk about the sheep, okay? And so, um, and some of you are going to be like, but the sheep ain't wild. I got that, but there was a day they were, okay? So, um, but, but we're, we're, so we're talking about the wild beasts of the Bible, and so the wild animals of the Bible. And, and so um, today, though, like I say, we're, we're going to talk about the wolf, and, and I just want to share with you, um, anyone remember Aesop's Fables? Yeah, okay, so, well, one person. <laughs> um, so, a lot of this, but none of that. <laughs> okay, so that's okay, I'm just teasing. Um, so I want to share with you an Aesop fable. If you know, you probably, if you're, you, if you're familiar with Aesop's fables, if you've read very many of them, you've probably read this one before. It's, it's entitled, the, the Wolf and the Lion. A wolf, having stolen a lamb from the fold, was carrying him off in his, to his lair. A lion met him in the path, and seizing the lamb, took it from him. The wolf, standing at a safe distance, catch that, standing at a safe distance, claimed, you have unrighteously taken from me that which was mine. The lion jeeringly replied, it was righteously yours, eh? Was it the gift of a friend, or did you get it by purchase? If you did not get it in one way or the other, how then did you come at it? And the moral of the story is, one thief's no different than the other. And today, now you might have noticed, we got the wolf today, we got the lion next week. It's one characteristic of the wolf and the lion is they're thieves. They steal. And our scriptures is very clear on that, right? And so that's, that's just one aspect. But we're going, to talk, we're going to talk about the wolf today. Um, and, and the lion we'll bring up next week. So, um, but our Bible mentions the wolf today. A dozen times, okay? And you'll notice you have 12 scriptures on the back of your, uh, of your announcement insert. Um, so the, he, he, the wolf, wolf or wolves are mentioned 12 different times. And, and um, in all but two of those, the two are mentioned similarly, but the other 10 are mentioned similarly also, just in a different direction, okay? And so um, you're, you'll notice as we walk through this, um, Jesus' um, followers, as we know, you and I, right, Christ's followers, uh, oftentimes Jesus refers to us as sheep. Now, I'm not a huge fan of being called a sheep, okay? As I've shared with some of y'all before, um, I used to work with them for a few years. Um, the only good thing I find about sheep, Lamb chops, rack of lamb, and chiselic. I'm just telling you straight up, okay? So um, that's my favorite part of sheep. Oh, wool, okay? So that's my favorite part of sheep. Um, sheep are not, they're not an uh, aggressive animal, and I tend to be aggressive. Um, uh, they're not an aggressive animal. They have no defense. Have you ever noticed, you know what a sheep's defense is? Nah. Wow, I'm scared now, right? Um, the sheep have no defense. Um, the, God did not create them with a defense, and that's okay. That's okay, but that's why he brought shepherds. That's why he brought shepherds. See, he, made, he created us as sheep because he was also sending the shepherd, and we have a shepherd. That shepherd protects us from the wolves because the sheep cannot defend themselves against wolves. The sheep has no, they, they got these tiny little hooves, but you know what? Their legs are like that, right? And they're like, right? They're, what are they going to do? They can't defend themselves. They try to run, but you know what? Sheep don't run very fast. I, well, back in the day, I can run pretty much the same speed as a sheep, okay? And I'm not a fast runner. There's a reason they're able to be eaten. They're able to be taken down so easily by predators like the wolf. They can't fight off an attacker. They need a shepherd to do that for them. They need a shepherd to defend them. 
Sheep were created to depend on their shepherd. Sheep were created to depend on their shepherd. You and I were created to depend upon our shepherd, Jesus Christ, as well. This is 49, verse 27. Benjamin is... In the morning, he devours the prey. In the evening, he divides the plunder. Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, that's what they're talking about, the tribe of Benjamin was known for its warring ways. It was known as a ferocious, a, a vicious uh, a, um, a tribe that, that was a very conquering tribe. They, were, they, they decimated their enemies. They were known for that. And, and um, they were very capable of, uh, shall we say, tearing apart their enemies, destroying, tearing apart the armies of their enemies, tearing apart the territories of their enemies. Now, there's a couple of people that, that we know that are Benjamites when we study our Bible. There's a couple that we know very well whether we realize they're part of the tribe of Benjamin or not. Number one is King Saul. King Saul was a Benjamite. Okay, so now think about this. Think about the, the victories, victory after, after victory of, of Saul. He, he lived out the reputation of the Benjamites. He was very, he destroyed, he did, not, he did not just conquer, he destroyed his enemies, okay? And when we look at our scripture, there, it's right there, the evidence is there. The second one that, is, that we oftentimes don't realize was a Benjamite happens to also be named Saul, only he was a Pharisee. <coughs> Saul the Pharisee was also a Benjamite, and think about how Saul, his ministry was. What did he do? He was vicious. He was tenac- tenacious. He, he, he did everything he could to de- try to destroy the sheep of Jesus. He tried to destroy. He was a wolf trying to destroy the flock. He was shredding them and pulling them. He was getting papers to get permission so he can go and persecute more of these people of the way. You know, that's what, they, that's what before Christian was created, that word was created. That's what the people who followed Jesus, they were called the followers of the way because Jesus said, I am the light that... I'm the, the 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 way, right? And so when you when you followed Jesus, they said you were following the way. And so he did everything he could to destroy every every morsel of the way that he could. He wanted to tear it up and destroy it. Once once that road to Damascus showed up, that wolf, that Saul became Paul, and he was just as ferocious, just as as aggressive. For Jesus, as he had been previously against Jesus. They're from the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin's a ravenous wolf, our scripture tells us. There's some traits of a wolf that we're going to walk through today. Obviously, one being ravenous, right? One, uh, um, in, in this text, that ravenous, that word ravenous comes from the Hebrew word teraph. Okay, it comes from the Hebrew word teraph. Ravenous literally means, teraph literally means to tear apart. In the early Hebrew, it means to tear apart. Okay, so the, t- the ravenous wolf, the tear them apart wolf, right? Tear them apart, and then the wolf comes from the word zabe, which means to be yellow. Zabe, wolf, in the Hebrew language means to be yellow. Now, there's some rumor that that might have been on account of the color of the wolf because they were, like today we know wolves tend to be more gray, black, white, right? But in that day, in that region, the wolves had a, a, apparently had a more of a brown or maybe yellowish possibly color to them. And so there's some who argue that's what it was. Most argue that, no, it was brown, not yellow. Now, there's a couple other attributes to being yellow, Okay, one is the fact that a wolf always, always, always attacks, al- almost always, always, always. The smart ones, the ones who've learned how to hunt, always attack from the rear or out of ambush. They attack from the rear or out of ambush. They don't come straight on. Now, I've seen some videos. There, there are some young ones that got to learn their lesson. I've watched buffalo stomp wolves. I've watched elk tear up wolves. I mean, when they come at them from the front, they don't do that. The reason they do it, they come from the back because they're yellow. And they take them down from behind. They wound them and bring them down. The second thing is, the second most popular uh, um, reason for the term of them being yellow is they, uh, they, they, they always attack the weak. 
The wolves always attack the weak. They go after the juvenile that can't get away. They go after the elderly that can't get away. They go after the injured that can't get away. If they have the opportunity to take any of those down, they're not going after a mature, defensible creature. They always go after the weak. Jesus said this. Um, do, did we know? Did we know that that the wolf and the and the lamb they used to get along? Remember that in the garden, all the animals got along. There was no meat eater and, and salad eater, right? There was no carnivore and herbivore. They they all were herbivore, right? They they all, they all got along in the garden before the fall, before Adam and Eve decided to Adam allowed Eve to be betray to to betray God to sin, and take the fruit. Prior to that, but after that is when suddenly we had meat eaters and we had veggie eaters. Okay? And, and a lot of people don't even think, oh, I, they ne- no, they were never together. Yes, they were. All the animals were together in the kingdom. Matthew 7, verse 15, Jesus says this. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ferocious, or the King James says, ravenous wolves. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothes, but the reality is they're ferocious or ravenous wolves. They're here to destroy. Jeremiah 5, 6 says, Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them. This is... This is in Jeremiah here. He's prophesying. Remember, Jeremiah is a prophet. He's prophesying about the Hebrew nation. The Hebrew nation's been disobedient to God. They've been, they've been living their own way, doing their own thing. They've been very, very uh, 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 sinful. And God says through Jeremiah, he says, Wherefore, a lion out of the forest shall slay them. means shall spoil them. Leopard shall uh, watch over their cities that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces. Sound familiar? Because their transgressions are many and their backslide increased. God's telling Jeremiah, I'm going to use the wolf. I'm going to use the wolf because they have been, he says, he says they shall be to pieces, right? They, we got the lion, we got the wolf, we got the, the leopard. They, the nation, the people, shall be torn to pieces because of their transgressions. Their mer- many and their backslidings are increased because they were increasingly walking away from God. And he says, about time for a spanking. And it's going to be brutal. And he's actually using wolves, using wolves to try to bring uh, the Hebrew nation back into line. But the wolves are still vicious, they're still ravenous, and they still destroy, okay? Now, you might be like, what's all the wolf thing? We don't got no wolves around here. Well, actually, we got them closer than you might think. Um, but they're, no, they're not here in Canton, okay? So, but here's the thing, right? The wolves are here in Canton. The wolves are in this room. Because the reality is we all have our wolves. Are we addicted to anything? That can be a cigarettes, that can be alcohol, drugs, that can be pornography. Maybe it's your infidelity. Maybe it's the jokes you continue to tell that you think, well, it's okay, God doesn't mind, he'll forgive me. It could be your phone. That phone can be a vicious, vicious wolf. It could be money. I don't have any I don't have any wolves in my life. I just don't have any. It can be pride. I'm better than all that. It can be pride. We have wolves in our lives and they will tear us up. They'll tear us up. They're ravenous beasts. They want to, they come to tear to literally from their the wording tear to pieces. They want to tear us up. They shred their pe- prey. They they, they they attack, they attack, um, um, they can attack by themselves or they can attack in a group. They can distract, they can, they can deter, they, they can pull you, pull the sheep away from the flock. 
They can also distract the shepherd. See, wolves, it's not uncommon for wolves if they have a, say, a herd of buffalo. They're trying to take it out. They're hungry. They need something to eat. The, the buffalo will stand rump to rump because they know where the wolves attack. They always attack from behind, if at all possible. Otherwise, they come from ambush. So the, bull, the, the buffalo will protect their rumps and their heads out facing the wolf pack. Eventually what happens is they, they either play this dance for a period of time and eventually someone gets lax within the buffalo or the wolves finally say, let's go find something else because we're not taking them on head on. We only attack from the rear. But if they can get them distracted, they, they, they often will take and have one distract a single, the weak one. They're weak because they give in. They'll have them distract. They'll distract the one, and the others will come from behind and attack and destroy. That's how wolves work. That's how wolves work. I've seen video of them going head to head. Them buffalo will stomp them. They destroy them. The elk shred them. They they it's not sometimes enough to take them on head on but rarely will they come after the shepherd instead they go after the flock they go after the flock now, i like wolves I, I i think ask my wife my kids they'll tell you man i love i love a picture of wolves i love them on t-shirts all that kind of, they're just i think they're an absolutely beautiful looking animal unfortunately their heart doesn't match their beauty on the outside and that's true with the wolves that we have within our lives they look really good. They look really nice. But they will tear us up. They'll tear us up. So wolves um, always attack the weak. And number two, wolves don't wait for prey to die before they tear them up. Okay, so I'm going to give you a visual. Okay? And you can thank me later. Um, wolves... When a wolf takes down, say they get, this, they get this buffalo distracted, they come in from behind, they cripple the buffalo so it can't get up and run anymore. They don't wait for it to die. They never, they don't go for the throat. Instead, they go for the soft part. They go around the belly button, the navel area, and they start tearing open the innards. The first thing they eat is intestine and stomach, heart, liver, intestines soft tissue that's what they go for if you ever see a wolf that is attacked has has just had a kill you'll notice its entire face is all bloody and it's blood from no tip of the nose back behind the ears you know why that is because they stuck their head up in the cavity of the chest to eat the innards they go for the inside they go for the heart but here's the thing the animal's alive and conscious the whole time until they bleed out. The animal is alive while they are eating its innards until it bleeds out. They have no mercy. They have no love. The wolves will destroy you and they'll kill you from the inside out. Thankfully, God put a thing into animals, they say. Now, I don't, they haven't been inside that animal's brain when it's happening. But they say the animal will go into shock, but it is alive and conscious while it's being devoured. And you're welcome for the nightmares. I know you don't want to go to the Black Hills anymore, and especially at night. <laughs> stay, in a pack, stay in a flock, okay? You're going to be okay. That's how wolves do. There's no difference between the wolf in the wild and the wolf in the pew. I just want to help you out with that. The wolf in the pew will go for your heart as well. He'll go for your innards as well. They do not attack. They don't go for the throat. They don't take you out immediately. They work from the inside out. So they don't wait for the prey to die. There's a um, Wyoming, 2016. Talk about the tenacity, the ferocity of a wolf. A pack of nine wolves 
in one night destroyed 19 elk. Two adults, 17 yearlings. Took out 19 elk in one setting in one night by nine wolves. They tear, they destroy. They, get, they got pictures. They lined all those elk up. You know what they ate? The innards. The carcasses were there. The carcasses were there. And that's exactly how they do it all the time. So the wolf can be in the wild and it can be in the sanctuary as well. Always have to watch it because the wolf waits for you to turn your back. The wolf waits for you to leave the flock. The wolf waits for you to leave the shepherd. The wolf waits, waits for you to be injured. How many times have we had that, right? I don't like what Pastor said. He's given me nightmares. I don't like wolves now. I don't like what Pastor said. And we're hurt, we're injured, and we walk away. We just start to limp away. And the wolf comes in and snatches you. And he will come and he'll take you down and he'll tear you up. It happens over and over again. Over and over again. So, so again, the, it's not, not about the visual, but the reality is it is about the visual because the reality is that's what he does. He not only, that 19 elk, think about that if that's a pack of, or a, a flock of, of 50 sheep. When those nine got bloodthirsty, here's the thing, they get bloodthirsty sometimes. They don't do it often. Usually they kill what they need, usually. But for whatever reason, they, they, they can't explain it. Sometimes they get bloodthirsty. And especially when they're in pack mode. When you have more than one wolf there. And they will just decimate. They will decimate a flock. I struggle. As your shepherd, it's my responsibility to protect the sheep, the flock, from the wolves. It's my responsibility, but it's also yours as a sheep. Yes, you're a sheep, okay? It's your responsibility as a sheep to stay within the flock. When there's an injury, to come to the shepherd, because what do we do if we, go, we get injured and we go elsewhere? Now we're alone and wounded, even less defensible, So it is the shepherd. Again, the wolf can distract the shepherd. We have this going on over here. And so the shepherd's addressing this. And in the meantime, the pack comes in behind and scatters the flock, tears up the flock. It happens. But as a shepherd, it's my responsibility to protect you. So when I lose one of you, it wrecks me. If I lose more than one of you, it really, really wrecks me because I accepted the role of shepherd and I failed to keep the wolves out. Ever have those conversations with people where pastor said this and I'm just like, I'm just mad and I'm not going back there. I'm not going to this and I'm not going to that. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to him about it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, and I'm hurt. Right? And the next thing you know, the wolf comes in and devours them. And the next thing you know, they want nothing to do with God. They want nothing to do with the church. The church did this and the church did I don't know how many times I've heard people say, the church this and the church that. Man, you were at, and, and, and they'll tell me, it was a church. The most I've ever heard anyone say was three churches that had hurt the same family. But they say, the church did it. Well, there's a difference between congregations and different individuals which are humans and wolves. And sometimes we're hurt about things that were, why, why were we even hurt to start with, right? There was nothing hurtful about it. You got a gut check, and now, now, now we're upset, Right? It, it, it were hurt, but they say, the church hurt me. You've never even been to mine. You've never even been to the flock that I pastor. You've never stepped foot into our, uh, into our pen, into our sanctuary, yet you're blaming me for what someone else did. But the church did it. It's because they got 
injured. They were weak, weakened. And the wolf came in and started eating their heart. Started eating them from the inside out. And they get what? They get what? They, oftentimes what happens, they're just absolutely, totally, 100% bitter. Angry, bitter. As the wolf's been eating their innards. And they blame God, and they blame the church. And if you're talking about the church, that would be the church with the big C, not the little C. And the church, God's bride, and you're blaming the bride, those who are faithful, along with those who are wolves or goats. You're blaming God for your hurt that some wolf inflicted upon you. The term divide in Genesis 49, 27, the term divide um, means to separate or, or distribute. They come and they, di they, they divide, right? Um, if, if you go back to um, Genesis 49, 27, it says, Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the mornings, he devours the prey. In the evening, he divides the plunder. His plunder is the wounded, the injured. He divides the plunder. You know what that means? That means he shares it with the other wolves. He's not sharing it with the shepherd. He's not going to tell you, go back and talk to your pastor. He's not going to do that. That wolf's going to say, I got it. And here's some other wolves for me to help feed, you, you to help feed. And that's the way of it. They divide. They, just, they give away. Those that are injured, those that they've already started eating the heart of, those that they've already torn up the abdomen of, they, then they distribute them amongst other wolves. It happens all the time. We see it all the time. Div entire congregations, or uh, congregations are divided, but entire denominations are divided. Churches are divided. Because wolves have gotten into the flock. And the shepherd either A, was unable to, was distracted by another wolf, whatever, was unable to see the, the wolf come in, the wolves, the pack come in, or B, the wolf just was in really good at hiding in their sheep's clothing that Jesus says they're in. That's his words, not mine. Jesus, uh, um, or Satan, I mean, attempts Jesus. See, because a wolf... When it's a wolf in, 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 a, in a sanctuary, when it's a wolf in a sanctuary, they're, they're wool, wearing that wool, right? And, they, and then they go to divide, right? Um, that, wolf, that wolf will destroy. Um, they'll also use flattery. Check me out. Look at me. I sound Christian. I sound very, I have great Christianese language. I can put on the face, but ultimately it becomes almost like a peacock. Let's fan the feathers, check me out, or I'll flatter you. Man, you're so awesome. You're just like, yeah. And they flatter you until now that, that wolf in sheep's clothing now has flattered me, has drawn me, has attracted me. Remember, we just did a series on chasing carrots. He's been dangling out the carrots before me. And that wolf will lead you out of the flock. Verse 29 verse 5 says, Those who flatter their neighbors are spreading nets for their feet. Satan, um, in, in, uh, when Jesus was in the, in the wilderness, uh, Satan comes and tries to flatter, tries to impress Jesus. By using scripture, because check it out, wolves, by the way, know scripture. That's how they can use it to take, pull away, to draw away the sheep. Satan tried deceiving Jesus. He tried getting Jesus to bow down to him. He's going to give him all this. And Jesus responded over and over again with scripture in rebuttal and putting down Satan. Satan, mm. 
Turn these stones to bread. No, man cannot live on bread alone. Right? Remember that? And, and, and Satan continues to try to give him what isn't Satan's to give. But he sounded really good. If we just listen to the words Satan shared, the wolf that he is, if we just listen to the words he shared, man, that, that, that's biblical. The prophet said it. It's in Scripture. But he was using it to try to deceive Jesus. And he does it to you and me every day. Do you think he's afraid of coming to you and me and trying to deceive us? No. He's going to send wolves among the sheep. So we have to be careful with those wolves. Because they'll come at us in all the different ways, so many different ways. Some days it's rare. It's rare one's going to come head to head. And the only time a wolf comes head to head is when they're young and foolish. Because they know God will take them out when they come head to head. God's the one who gave you the antlers. He's the one who gave you the tusks. He's the one who gave you the, the power to destroy them. That's why they don't come head to head. They sneak up on you from behind or attack out of ambush. Paul warned the church in Acts 20, the first century church. He says this, starting in verse 28, he says, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. He's talking to the leaders of the early church, that first century church. He's saying, look, the Holy Spirit made you overseer. You were called, you were ordained to oversee this flock. They were the pastors. They were the church leaders. They were the ones God put in place. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. When the shepherd is distracted, when the shepherd leaves, Paul knew he wasn't going to be around forever. He knew he was going to die. He knew he would not be with each of these congregations all the time. When I leave, the wolf will come. The savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. And we see it all over Scripture where the early church, that's why Paul wrote so many epistles. That's why all these letters were written was because the church was, there were wolves in the church already. Some of them, some of them, so be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning you. Oops, sorry, sorry, I missed the verse I wanted. Uh, even from your own number, men uh, from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to to draw away disciples after them. Even from your even from the ones who are currently leaders in your congregation, even the ones who are tur- currently church. Maybe they're the ones in that day. Of course, we had a lot of 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 the the the. Pastors were going out and about, right? The disciples, they were going out and about. They were, they were on the road, right? Um, and so even those among them would go out. They talk about these prophets. Even among your own number, they're going to rise up. Flock. Paul knew this. He's sharing that with them. Guess what? Do you think it's any different 2,000 years later? No, it's not. There are wolves among the leaders as well. There are wolves among the leaders. There are shepherds that are not shepherds. There are wolves. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Paul and I, I love Paul. I think him and I, we could have been like, hey, dude, how's it going, right? Uh, I, 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 I. Paul, I just have a connection with Paul. There are so many times I try to, I, I have a conversation with someone who's suddenly been hurt, someone who's, who's in pain, someone who's struggling, whether from here or from even another congregation. I'm not saying it's all from here, right? Um, it's other congregations, other people in this town. I've had so many conversations. I'll be in the, in the yard working on something, and someone will stop, and I get to visit with them, and they tell me about how the church has hurt them how much pain they're in, how much suffering they're going through. 
And as I, and I walk with them and I talk with them and I, and I pray with them, I just weep with them as well. I understand where Paul's heart's at because it wrecks me when I see someone and they, they, they blame the church, they're blaming God, they're blaming his bride. Reality is they don't understand it was the wolf that was in there that actually did the destruction. It was the wolf that ate their intestines. It was the wolf that took their liver. It was the their heart. It wasn't the church. It wasn't the shepherd. And it wasn't the shepherd. Yet we blame him. We blame him. That's what Paul's talking about. I warned I, I never stopped warning each of you day and night with tears. He was passionate. He loved them as much as he had previously hated them. Paul, if you think about this, Paul is warning them against who Paul used to be. That's why it gets to me so much. I'm warning against who I used to be. I used to blame the church for a lot of things. It was because I did not know God. I did not know the word. I did not understand that God was protecting me, but it was a wolf in sheep's clothing that hurt me. 2,000 years ago, it was true, and it's true today. There are wolves in the wild, and there are wolves in our sanctuaries. So, we got the ferocious, the tenacious side of wolves, correct? Now, there's two other verses. There's two verses that talk about, um, that I shared with you um, from Isaiah, which hold wolves in a little different light. Isaiah 11, verse 6, the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. That's how Paul was after the Damascus Road, after Jesus reached him. Paul was that wolf that had previously destroyed, previously tore up, previously d scattered. Paul was that wolf that now was lying with the lambs. But he only did it because of the little child, the little child being Jesus Christ. Isaiah 65, 5 says the wolf and the lion will eat straw with, like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. It will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountains, says the Lord. He's talking about when Jesus comes back and that little child comes back. It's about the new heaven and the new earth. That's what we're talking about. Then the wolf will lie with the lamb. The wolf will lie. One day the wolf will lie with the lamb again. We're not in that day. Jesus hasn't come back, though he's never really left, right? I mean, but we're not in that day yet. The wolf is not lying down with the lamb. And if the wolf's lying with the lamb, it's only in deception. It's only because he's preparing to attack the lamb. One thing we need to remember God created the wolf, and he created the lamb. Whether in canine, in, in, in sheep form, or whether in human form. Whether he, he created them within the womb, whether it was in a, in, in a bitch's belly, whether it was in a ewe's belly, or whether it was in your mother's belly. He created each and every one in the womb. That means he loves each and every one. And he wants each and every one. Okay? He does not want, what, what God wants, he wants to redeem the wolf too. God wants to redeem the wolf too. He doesn't just want to redeem, he doesn't just want salvation for the lamb. He wants salvation for the wolf as well. And that's a choice the wolf has to make. One day, one day when Jesus returns, the wolf will lay with the lamb again. God loves the wolf as well as the lamb. Don't ever think he loves me more than you. He doesn't love me more than anybody else. 
He doesn't love the saved more than he loves the unsaved. He doesn't love the righteous more than the unrighteous. God loves us all the same. He wants all of us to be redeemed. He's not slow in his return. He's patient in his return. That the wolves, the wolves will come to Jesus. They'll come to the shepherd not to be smote except for to themselves and born again in Jesus. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to destroy the wolf. He doesn't, people say, I can't believe God sent someone to hell. God never sent anyone to hell. He never will send anyone to hell. It's a choice that we make where we end up in hell. Whole nother story. God loves the wolf, and he wants to redeem the wolf as well. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. See, we just said God talks about, we, our scriptures tell us, God thinks different than we do, right? His is up here, ours is like way down yonder. We can't think at his level. We don't understand at his level. We don't love at his level. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Matthew 5, Jesus is talking, he's starting in verse 43, he says, You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. If you've got a wolf in your life, are you a human wolf in your life, are you supposed to hate him or love him? says love him and pray for them I'm not going to pray for I want him to die I don't want to pray for him that's because God's love is not in your heart you have not submitted yourself 100% to God because otherwise that's what watch these 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 uh, uh, parents of children who have been murdered and they go to the prison and they pray for and they forgive the murderer and they ask the murderer to accept Jesus into their heart. They share the gospel with them because they love like Christ loves. Don't hate your enemies. Love your enemies. Pray, for them, persecute you, that your children may be that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. He gives to both. He gives to all. He provides for all because he loves all and he wants all redeemed. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Or not, catch this, I love that, because Matthew's there, okay? And his next line is, the next thing he says, are not even the tax collectors doing that? Remember, Matthew's a tax collector. He's a former tax collector. <laughs> Every time I read something like that, I'm like, Matthew's got to be going, dude! Check it out, I'm here, right? Are not the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, we have a guest come in. If you don't greet that guest, you only greet all the people you already know. That's not being very Christ-like. I'm thankful. I'm thankful so far. And it was just this last week I found out there was that we had a guest come in. Now, this has been, I'm thinking it's, if I'm remembering the guest correctly, it's a couple years ago. I found out that we have someone out there who did not feel welcomed here. They, they, they're claiming they never got greeted, even by me, which I find that very hard to believe. But, but remember what that wolf does? Distracts. And I could have been looking this way instead of watching over here when that wolf took a bite out of this person's heart. The wolf distracts. I thank God that's the only time since we've been a, a congregation that's the only time I've ever had anyone tell me and really the person who was hurt isn't the one who told me. It's a good friend of theirs that told me about it. I thank God there's only been one but it breaks my heart there was even one that anyone came through these doors and didn't feel welcome. Pastor gets a little wound up, right? Okay? Pastor gets a little wound up up here. 
but is strictly out of love. Is strictly out of not wanting you to lose your soul to the devil, to the wolf. That's the only reason I get one because I love Jesus Christ. I love our creator. I love God. I love this family. I love every person I come into contact with. How can you do that? You don't even know them. You're right, I don't, but Jesus does, and I know he loves them, and therefore I can love them. And if we love them, we won't hurt them, and we won't reject them, and we won't deny them. Instead, we'll embrace them and welcome them and invite them. Exactly, won't give up on them. Absolutely not. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if they, if you greet only your people, what are you doing more than others? In other words, you know that atheist across the street? Guess what? He greets everyone too. What are you doing more than him? That's what he's saying. You know that boss you can't stand? You still greet him every day. What are you doing more than anyone else? Well, he signs my check. I've got to be nice to him. What are you doing? Do not even pagans do that, non-believers. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Perfect in love. Understanding that there are wolves out there. We still need to love the wolf. We still need to love the wolf. We still need to pray for the wolf. Go into politics. You want to talk you want to talk about politics or talk about people who are praying for people to die? It breaks my heart when I have someone tell me, I just hope he dies. I've been praying for him because I'll tell him to pray for it no matter who it is. Whether it's our last president, the president before, the one before that, whatever, this president, I don't care who it is, whether it's our mayor, whether it's, it's a city council member, whatever. There are several politicians I've had people tell me, I just pray that they die. I'm praying for them. Wow, would you like to know Jesus? Because I want to share him with you. Because Jesus loves them. God loves them. God wants to redeem Maybe you could share Jesus with them. Maybe you could share the gospel. Let's love what our Father loves. That's what Jesus said. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Our perfection comes from Christ. Our perfection comes from the Holy Spirit. Our perfection comes from God. Be perfect and love perfectly like God loves. Number two, God wants to redeem the sheep too. God wants to redeem the sheep too. Look, he doesn't want just the wolves. He doesn't want just the sheep. He doesn't want just the shepherd. And any shepherd who ever acts like somehow they are better than their sheep is a wolf. They're a wolf. When someone elevates me and I have people do this and I just hate it, they try to elevate me about pastor, 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 and all of a sudden pastor makes one mistake. Pastor, you know, like is like human and stuff, and now they hate pastor. Because pastor was a liar, he was a this, he was a that, right? They, they elevate, don't elevate me. I am no better than you. I'm but a lonely sinner too. But by the grace of God, there go I. And that's not just me, but that's any shepherd. Any shepherd, we are human. And we are no better. God loves me no more than he loves any of you. No more than he loves any wolf. He doesn't love me more. It's a perfect love that he has for all of his creation. For all of his creation. Sheep, wolf, shepherd, doesn't matter. It's a perfect love. Let us love perfectly. Let's be perfect in Christ, through Christ, with our Father, as our Father. Father God, I just thank you. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Lord, man, it's so hard. I've been led away by wolves. I've been, I've been hurt by wolves. And I foolishly failed to realize that it was a wolf doing it. And it wasn't your church. It wasn't your bride. Because I blamed her. 
I blamed her, but I didn't know. But now that I know, I could never, ever again blame her. Father God, I just ask that you help each and every one of us in this time that we understand, man, I live and there's a bunch of wolves out there. We've got to be careful for them. We've got to be careful. We've got to be wary of the wolf. Father God, help us to remember to stay within the flock. Help us to remember that then when we're injured, we go to the shepherd. The shepherd helps us when we're injured. The shepherd will carry us upon his shoulders when we're injured, Father God. And on occasion, the shepherd will injure us, Father God, so that we will stop wandering away. Father God, your son, your son went to that cross. He came here as the shepherd. He came and he shepherded the flock. Father God, he shepherded in amazing ways. And if we will just reflect Jesus as he lived out his life here, Father God, if we'll just do that, Lord, I ask that you help each and every one of us. That's our, that's our desire. That's our heart. That is 100% of who we are. Lord, help us. Help us, to, help us to see when there's a wolf in our midst. Help me, Lord. Lead me that as I shepherd, Lord, that I'd be the shepherd that you desire me to be. Help me not to be distracted. Help me to always come to the aid of and defense of and protection of the flock that you've entrusted to me, that you've asked me to lead. Father God, help me to be a shepherd as David was a shepherd and as Jesus was a shepherd. Help us to become the flock that Jesus is leading. Help us to be 100% the flock that Jesus is leading. Father God, just heal us. Wolves have attacked us. We've got wolves in our lives right now. Father God, I just ask you to remove those wolves, to remove that addiction, whatever that addiction is. Maybe it's addiction to self. Maybe it's addiction to job. Maybe it's addiction to money. Maybe it's addiction to, to any in, uh, of the numerous types of chemicals out there. Father God, I just ask that you help us. Help us to defeat the wolves that are in our lives. Help us to, 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 to stay within the flock, to come to the shepherd if needed, to help remove the wolf from our life. Father God, I just, I just, I just, man, I just thank you. I thank you for the blessing it is to be here serving you. I thank you for the blessing it is to be one of your sheep as well. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the wolves that we've had. Any of us and all of us have had. The wolves that have distracted us, the wolves that have pulled us away, the wolves who have tried tearing out our heart. While we were breathing, living in you, they've gone after our hearts. And Father God, I just ask, I just, I just ask you to heal us. And we can go on living stronger than before. In you, within your fold, Father God, shepherded by your shepherd, shepherded by Jesus. We just pray these things in Jesus' loving name. Amen. Amen.